Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this is not the inaugural episode of PG Fire, but rather this is the test episode. This is episode zero 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 zero. That's four zeros, as in it never happened. If you want to get the show notes, you can go to iState TV forward slash zero 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 zero. We're gonna get you. We're 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 gonna get our juices flowing, and we're just we're just gonna we're just gonna dive right into the fun with this. Remember our report? I remember from June nineteenth. Do you remember? I remember. More wildlife fish are experiencing intersex. That's what right. Causing this estrogen mimickers. It's gay it's frogs. Awful. What's in the news today, London Telegraph? Boom! There it is. Becoming transgender from this. contraceptive pill chemicals being flushed down household drains. That's a beautiful so thing. Our frogs, That's a beautiful thing. See, Alex Jones. Before. The point is, we went <laughs> He's on a US geological survey of the fish and wildlife. He has and done fancy. it. Alex we Jones has vindicated himself. Boston, he you know who told us is correct. He... The EPA, their scientists, <laughs> almost unanimously. Oh, uh, praise Keck? The 80s, the 90s, Can you praise the Keck over gay frogs? They sent sure. letters to their boss saying, take it out, take it out. It's hydrofluorosilicic acid. It's not calcium fluoride. It's deadly poison. It's an adjuvant. It makes every other drug in the water work many, many times more stronger. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Here's Harvard studies. Here's everything. But what do they do? They just say we're complete liars. They make fun of Alex. That's what they do. They make the fun of him. Here he is. He's, he's dropping knowledge. Mike Barrett. He's dropping knowledge. Nobody wants to accept it. I just, or for all of you Kekians out there with your Pepe the Frog, just hope that, that, that Pepe stays away from the government water that has been infested with estrogen. I thought this would be a great way to start off our our show with a little bit of, of gay froggery. Because how do you start off, if you're going to start off a new show, and this is like, well, it's not really the first episode, but just imagine that it's the first episode. If you're going to start off a new show, then I think it goes without saying. If you're not starting off with gay frogs, why why are you even why are you even in the game? Is 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 <laughs> that's that's kind of where I'm going with this. So let's go to our next story. This is this is gonna be our top story. Meet uh, the modern day president, Donald Trump may have degraded the dignity of the office beyond repair. This is Salon. This is a Salon article here that, that uh, is excerpted here. This is from Salon. Worse, Trump supporters seem thrilled with the president to over the weekend before a celebration of national independence. Oh, it's so wonderful to see the quote-unquote left suddenly, suddenly caring about patriotism. How convenient. Declared the final demise. The final demise. That's not histrionics there. Not histrionics at all. Of acting presidential Wait, I don't even know what that means. De uh, l l let's play along, studio audience. Declared the final demise of acting, presidential decency and decorum. I don't. I don't am I reading that wrong? Because that doesn't even sound like a real complete sentence. But I'm probably reading it wrong. Wrong. Trump declared in no uncertain terms that his use of Twitter is not presidential. Well. Uh, yeah, and, and, and there you see the picture that they have there of Trump uh, taking out CNN. And, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> my, my take on this is I love it. I love it. It's a beautiful thing. I am for all of the effery that is going all around the world right now. I, I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure how things are going to play out. I don't think anybody is, but... But I got to say, I, I'm inclined to believe that right now Donald J. Trump is winning over a lot of people to to maybe look at how things are done and say, hey, wait a second. 
this is what government looks like? This is what government... Because this is what government looks like. It's just, it's been behind doors, behind well, behind closed doors. Uh, now it's out in the open. So I am for it. I love it. I love that Salon is, is uh, going to such histrionic levels. You know, Obama murdered children. I mean, he didn't, I guess he didn't really murder children. He did it, he did it indirectly. You know, he, he commanded the bombers to drop the bombs that murder children. And now how many other presidents have done the same? And, and somehow you're getting a news flash that the, the, you know, the, the status of the presidency may not be what you thought it was because it never was. It's always been a lie folks. So we're going to go on to the next story. <laughs> But I got, <laughs> oh man, I, I, I thank you, Salon. Thank you, Salon. You're, you're doing God's work there. And I, I greatly appreciate, uh, wh what it is that you're, that you're doing for, for the cause, for the community. <laughs> so we're going to get to this, uh, next story here. Let's, uh, this is a little bit more, actually this, this story, this story should, should upset some folks. It certainly upsets me. And this story is the drug crisis is pushing nearly half a million kids into foster care. That's right, folks. This is the price that you pay for your morality being forced on people who are not harming others. These folks, you, I mean, some drugs are more harmful than others. And I'm anytime that you're addicted to anything, it's, it's not necessarily a good thing. Addiction in and of itself is a bad thing. Not all people who, who do quote unquote drugs are addicted. I know I'm addicted to drugs, at least one drug I'm totally addicted to, and that's caffeine. I hope they ever, if they ever outlaw caffeine, man. <laughs> wow, I'm going to turn to a life of crime because caffeine, the price of caffeine will, will instantly go up and then I will have to, uh, I'll have to turn to the crimes to get the caffeine. Uh, this is from the Libertarian Republic. The American foster care system is in a state of crisis, strained by a massive influx of children since 2011, fueled by the opioid epidemic and general drug abuse. That's right. Social services in almost every state across the country are experiencing increasing increases in children needing foster care. And why do they need foster care, folks? Well... Because they're they're being uh, uh, te the the kids are being taken from their parents, or they're they're <laughs> the parents are being arrested. But but interestingly enough, look look at what what is being cited here. Officials from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services said in 2015 that roughly 428 thousand kids were in foster care, and note that the number has likely likely experienced a significant increase due to skyrocketing drug abuse rates in 2016 and and uh, opioid dependence is also becoming more prevalent in newborn babies whose parents are addicts. It's heartbreaking to watch a baby go through withdrawal and then give their baby back to mom. Uh, Deb McLaughlin, a foster parent to her grandchildren, told Washington Post fake news, Washington Post. So Take this in, folks. We have a drug war going on. We have criminalized and stigmatized drug users. Uh, be they people who smoke weed or people that shoot up, whatever the case might be. And, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving people a pass who are, who are, 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 are literally destroying their lives with, uh, uh. Uh, uh, just a, a horrendous chronic use of, of drugs. I'm not giving them a pass. But we've created a culture in which you're, you're pretty much blacklisted and you're, well, I mean, you're a potential fugitive from the law if, if, if you have a drug problem. If, if you've become a drug addict, your, 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 your status in this world is, is pretty low. So you're not going to seek out help regularly, uh, knowing that you're going to pay a cost that you could end up in prison and you'll certainly, uh, it's highly likely that you'll end up highly stigmatized. So a lot of these folks, what are they doing? 
they're keeping it to themselves and it's just getting worse and worse and not getting the kind of help they need. And then you see while, while marijuana is illegal, opioids are legal. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the, well, they're not legal, but you know, the, the, the prescription drugs that they're giving out that, uh, is you're seeing a spike in, in, in that kind of drug abuse. So yeah, there, there, there's a, there's a, there's a prices. There's a, there's a price to be paid for the, the quote unquote drug crisis that they're calling it. I'm calling it the drug war because it's the drug war that is pushing people behind closed doors that is pushing them underground. That is, it is, it is not enabling people to more freely seek the help that they need. Now, one thing that this thing doesn't count here, uh, that this article doesn't really cover is, and I don't know the statistics on this, but you, you think about the number of children who've been affected by their parents being arrested and thrown in jail because they have drugs. And a lot of these are talking about marijuana. You know, people are sitting in, in, in cages because they smoke a plant. And I'm not advocating for marijuana use at all. I'm just saying that the drug war is damaging people. And it's not stopping the use of drugs. It hasn't stopped at all. It's enabling a criminal element. I could go on and on. I won't go on and on anymore about this, but it's a it's a it's a tragic story. So why don't we why don't we get to our next story here? Because that's what we do. We move along to the next story, and the next story coming up is a doozy. It's the mother of all mothers. Can I say that? Mother of all mothers. I'm gonna say Mother of all mothers. There it is. A single wiretap intercepted 3 million calls last year. That's right. 3 million calls, one wiretap, 3 million calls. And it absolutely concerns you. And this is from Activist Post, an article written by Claire Burnish. So Claire writes here, to carry out a relatively unimpressive drug sting, an unarmed federal agency swept up well over 3 million phone conversations in two months with a lone wiretap order. That's right. One wiretap order enabled an agency to tap 3 million phone conversations. And it was one of 3,186 such orders issued by federal and state judges in 2016. Pretty much everybody is being wiretapped or, or darn close to it. Uh, the, the, the article goes on here, it quotes wiretap report. 2016, the federal wiretap with the most intercepts occurred during a narcotics investigation in the middle district of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, hey! Shout out to PA. That's what I say. That's that's where I live. So that's, that's why I said that. Uh, take a moment to allow that to sink in. That's right. Uh, the, the wiretap resulted in the interception of 3,292,000 cell phone conversations. I, hey man, I wonder if I was in those conversations. I don't know. I'm not that I was calling drug dealers, but uh, I don't think you need to be calling drug dealers to be caught in that conversation. Take a moment to allow that to sink in because given the domestic spying has become something of an accepted facet, it has, it has become totally accepted on, on this day on, uh, you know, wearing the flag of my oppressor's day. Let's take some time to thank the American people. Uh, the land of the free, the home of the brave, where American citizens look up and they see their government spying on just about everyone. And their response is, it's, it's for our own good. <laughs> so, so take that in. And if that doesn't sufficiently offend, keep in mind that there is yet to be a single conviction resulting from that inordinately lenient wiretap. That's right. Not a single conviction. And you know, folks, I'm not even sure if they were even after a conviction at all. So there you have it, folks, the mother of all wiretaps. We're going to go on to the next story here. And the next story coming up here 
So what I'm doing here as I do this show is I'm actually recording segments. So that's why you see like a little pause. I'm going to on recording segment. I'm going to, from this show, there will be uh, little, little segments that will emerge. Uh, so we're going to go on to the next story here. And that next story is Alinksys tells customers how to remove CIA surveillance tools. This is from Bits Online. Oh my gosh. I, 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 I didn't read this article yet. I'm going to see what this says. It, it sounds uh, pretty interesting though. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it, if it matches the headline here. Uh, WikiLeaks released details of the Cherry Blossom project a week ago. The firmware turns at least 25 models of commonly used home routers into surveillance devices. That's right. Uh, Cherry Blossom, by the way, is a government program, just, just so we're, we're clear here. According to Linksys, its purpose is to monitor, control, and manipulate all in and outgoing traffic. It also permits the infection of other connected devices. Is that sweet? It's for our good, though. You know, this is uh, wearing the flag of, our, of my oppressor's day. And, you know, the British, uh, we kicked them out. We, I know, there's a mouse in my pocket. We kicked them out because of the tea tax. But the the new British, <laughs> let's call them the new British. Actually, the new British, they're a little bit nastier than the old British. But that's another story. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're infecting our routers with viruses to assure that uh, we're safe. Not from them. No, from ourselves, probably. Linksys warned the firmware can be loaded onto a router via physical access to a device and properly and properly to it to it via Wi-Fi. So the company published a firmware update to rid its devices of the compromise. It advises them to install the update and perform a factory reset. That's right. Linksys is doing the job of resist right there. So, you know, I don't know what kind of router you have, but at Linksys, you, you just earned, I, I don't think I have a Linksys router, but certainly now I'm gonna be considering a Linksys router because that's a pretty boss move there. I thank you, Linksys. Thank you for your service. Hashtag T-Y-F-Y-S. So that was pretty, that's pretty awesome. I'm very happy for Linksys. Uh, Taking the time out of their busy day to free us from ourselves. And by ourselves, I mean the state. And by the state, I mean our neighbors. So we're going to get to the next story here. This this next story is, is another one that will make your hair pull out. It's very fitting that this is the type of story that we're covering on uh on this day, on this day of all days, wearing the flag of my oppressor's day. There it is. There it is. There you see the headline there. Amish man sentenced to six years in prison. That's right. Six years in prison for not seeking FDA approval. And there's a nice little uh, graphic there. FDA. Yep, and you notice it's the FDA drug companies. They're in bed. And next to the FDA and the drug companies, well, look at that. It's a patient in a coffin. That that seems about right. So this is from The Daily Sheeple. By the way, I really recommend The Daily Sheeple. I love The Daily Sheeple. I go there all the time. TheDailySheeple.com. I know a couple people that write for Daily Sheeple, and those people are awesome too. So, according to the government, the Amish man broke the law by growing, processing, and bringing to market his... Hold on. Hold on, everybody. Hold on. Brace yourselves. I don't want to scare anyone. His own herbal supplements. <laughs> That's right. His own herbal supplements. Man made his own herbal supplements, and he did not get permission from the crown. That's right. He did not seek permission from the crown, so the crown was not pleased. So U.S. News reported that Giraud manufactured salves and skin treatments, one of which the FDA claims could be harmful to the skin. Oh, well, everything could be harmful to the skin. I don't know what that means. I just threw that out there. Everything could be harmful to the skin. He also claimed one extract could 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 help. Oh, well, I, I can't get cut off here. Let me see. Let me see if I got it down here. 
Uh, he also claimed one extract could help cure cancer, which the FDA disputed. You know, if if it can't cure cancer and he's selling it, eventually people are going to figure it out and stop buying it. See, you know, the market will, will I won't say with 100% certainty, but in general, the market will weed out the, the, the shucksters. So in 2013, Garan ignored orders from the FDA. What a boss. He ignored the orders to stop selling his product. Good, good for him. So we get down here to uh, what Gerard wrote. I do not waive my immunity to this court, uh, said Gerard, who represented himself during the trial. I do not consent, he added, emphasizing the fact that he, according to his face, he doesn't recognize the authority of the court, only that of his higher power. Uh, Judge Reeves uh, then uh, probably didn't like that. Sentenced him to six years in prison. They created a felon today out of a good law-abiding abiding citizen, said Arizona Sheriff and civil rights activist Richard Mack. Mack, uh, along with another, uh, another group of supporters, said, This is a national disgrace and outrage. No, it's just state on state faces being state on state faces. This is what they do, man. This is normal. It really is. He is being punished for being stubborn. No, he's being punished for being defiant. That's the key. You can be stubborn, but if you're not being defiant of the state, that's okay. But if you're defying the state, they had to make an example out of him. He wasn't afraid of them, and they made an example out of him. So it continues here because he steadfastly refused uh, to, uh, well, let's see, Trump uh, Max stated he'll be uh, pressing Trump to issue Gerard a part. Gerard a pardon. That ain't gonna happen. Trump is not gonna issue this guy uh, a pardon. And uh, Judge Reeves uh, uh, said uh, uh, the Kentucky farmer brought all the trouble on himself. Quote: Because he steadfastly refused to follow the law. My laws, little gods, my little gods that I have written on paper. And remarking on the uh, se- remarking on the severity of the sentence for selling simple plant-based remedies, Michael Fox, who served as a standby attorney for Gerard, pointed out Friday that the punishment for this individual will be harsher than it would be for others. There have been cases where people have raped small children and got less of a sentence than this guy got. In some instances, people have raped children and gotten probation. So there you have it, folks. You, 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 the, the, the biggest thing, there's a lot of things that you can do crime-wise, and maybe you won't get stiff penalties. But one thing you cannot do, you cannot do something that absolutely serves as an example to others of how you can openly, blatantly defy my laws. You, you, you don't. You don't want to open up that can of worms because if you do, they're going to come with guns and uh, you're going to either be dead or you're going to be in a cage like this guy. I, I, I don't know if this guy knew what he was gotten into, getting into with this. I, I, I hope he did. And if he didn't, I can't say I'm surprised at the ending. And I can't say that I'm really at all surprised that this is what happens in the state of our state face land because this is what happens, folks. So that was, that was depressing, man. We got to do something that's a little lighter here. I know I got another story. You know what? I'll do this next story here. And this next story is a little, it's interesting. I mean, let me get to it here. How your brain is getting hacked. That's right. Your brain is getting hacked. I've, I've seen this before and, I didn't, I didn't play it. So there's a, there is a video here, but I'm not going to play the video. And if you want to watch the video, go again to, uh, go, go actually go to iState.tv uh, forward slash zero, 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 zero. That's four zeros. And you get all the show notes that you'll include the, the, the video here. But I just want to, I want to go over what, what this, uh, what this, uh, what this guy wrote. This is from bigthink.com. And he's writing here, one thing we don't talk about is that it's sort of hard to talk about this. Our minds have these kinds of backdoors. There's a kind of, if you're human and you wake up and you open your eyes, there's a certain set of dimensions to your experience that can be manipulated. Well, you can be influenced. You can be influenced by uh, 
by the the type of not not just the information that you take in but how you take in the information and and i think that that's where he's he's going with this here so I'm going to skip down here. So it says, so knowing this, it turns out that there's this whole playbook of persuasive techniques that actually I learned when I was at the Stanford Persuasive Technology Lab and that most people in Silicon Valley and the tech industry learned as ways of getting your attention. So one example is we're all vulnerable to social approval. Absolutely. Or social ostracism, either way. We care what other people think of us. So, for example, when you upload a new profile photo of yourself on Facebook, there's a moment when our mind is very unvulnerable to knowing, what do other people think of my new profile photo? And so we get a new like on our profile photo. Uh, Facebook uh, could actually message me and say, oh, you have new likes on your photo profile. Your whatever. Your profile photo. And it knows that we're vulnerable and, and it's reinforcing, by the way, it's reinforcing that social approval type of thinking is I think where he's going here. And the thing that, uh, that they control is the dial. The technology companies control the dial for when and how long your profile photo shows up on other people's new feed, news feeds, blah, blah. They can orchestrate it so that more people see it or less people see it as the case might be. And the problem is they don't do this because they're evil. They do it because again, they're in this race for our attention. They're going to reward uh, uh, the things that they think will catch, get in, uh, attention. They're going to put more of it out there. But it, 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 it basically, it begins to condition us to seek, you know, seek the likes and the shares and seek social approval. And I, I mean, I, I mean, I, it kind of uh, it, it takes us away from self awareness, and it and it and it definitely reinforces a collectivist type of mindset where you're seeking the approval of the great big Borg around. Uh, uh, but he continues here. People become addicts to slot machines. I think it's two to three times faster than any other kind of gambling in the casino. So it's insane. And why is that? Because it's very simple. You just pull the lever and sometimes you get a reward and sometimes you don't. And the more random it is, the more variable it is, the more addictive it becomes. Now, I actually want to uh, say a little bit more about this. Go. This article is, is focused on the social approval access of, of, of how... Facebook and other social media is hacking your brain, but it's actually hacking your brain in, well, more ways than, than this. And, and I'm, I'm going to just add another one. There's other ways, but I, I wanted to mention another way that social media is hacking your brain. It is training you to think in smaller and smaller bites. And you, you cannot, uh, within these little information bites you cannot really you, you can't really pursue a complex chain of thought and you'll find yourself increasingly less likely to read anything that's more than a paragraph long you know the the emergence of the uh the TLDRs, you know, too long didn't reads, <laughs> you know, that's, <laughs> that's happening more and more. And, and so people are much more easily manipulated. If, if the way that they're looking at the world is through these, these, these small little bites, these, these highly emotional bites that either reinforce that social acceptance or or make you doubt that social acceptance it makes you much more manipulable and and, and it's not just governments that want to manipulate you it's all you know it's it's, it's non-government organ, organizations i want to manipulate you i confess i want to manipulate you i want to manipulate you to begin to think of the world in a way that is not it's, it's not centered around the notion that it's polite and acceptable for one entity to have a monopoly on violence and to use that violence to force others to live up to a moral code that is not is going far and be, uh, way, way beyond simply checking people 
for harming others. So yeah, I want to manipulate you, and and in that vein, yeah, I'm I'm gonna try to produce this type of content too, this type of quick uh, dash. Uh, I'm gonna try to meet you where you live uh, and uh, do my part, however I can, to 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 nudge folks towards, well, away from the small bites and away from so much needed needing that social acceptance because these are the ways that not just governments but all types of entities out there are 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 basically making you an easy mark you're just it's just much easier now for us to manipulate you to make you think what we want you to think so Yes, it is true. Facebook, Tinder, all these other things, they're, they're, they're hacking your brain. And they're hacking them in many more ways than, than this article included. But this was, this was a good conversation starter. So, got our next story here. And this is, well, <laughs> this is, this is going to be a YouTube video. It's about two two and a half or so minutes long i'm not sure i'll play the whole video here but uh i i don't want to spoil it here i'm just gonna go to it and there you see uh it's uh blm wins that's right blm wins australia's sydney peace prize this is from rebel media Now, in the United States, Black Lives Matters is boasting of the fact it's won the Sydney Peace Prize. It's won the prize, the prize of peace. Founder of Black Lives Matters. She's there coming she to is. Sydney in November to accept this vicious so woman peace prize. It's really a sham prize. As crazy as this might seem, Black Lives Matters, an outfit out there denigrating police, uh, promoting violence against the police, inciting all sorts of troubles with protests on the street. How can they qualify for a peace prize? Interesting that he focuses on the police issue because they go far beyond uh, a police. And I and I also want to add, by the way, that uh, uh, Black Lives Matter is not a monolithic organization. There are many folks, there are many organizations, many independent groups, some less independent groups. Uh, a, a fair amount of them, I would say, are, are pretty scary, dangerous thugs that have a in some case, black supremacists, some take, take cases, socialist, communist, some take cases, they're, they're basically black Nazis, some of them, but not all of them. I don't want to paint the whole Black Lives Matter uh, movement with uh, a broad stroke. And uh, my, my, my biggest issue with uh, the overall movement is not that, that they're necessarily saying bad things about cops. I, I'm not for, for people going around uh, uh, doing violent things. I don't think that a, a violent upheaval is, is any good, but the idea of black lives matter winning a peace prize. Okay. I'm assuming if, if BLM is getting it, then that means that the, the particular, uh, circle of people within the Black Lives Matters movement that associate with this woman. That's what they're recognizing as the winner of the Peace Prize. Let's see, let's see where Mark goes with this, Mr. Mark Latham. Well, I can report from Sydney, Australia, that the Peace Prize itself is an absolute sham. It's always a war. It's a bloody sham. A radical, pro-violence outfit. So maybe Black Lives Matters fit in in that regard. Let's have a look at some of the past winners of this Sydney Peace Prize that's hosted by the City of Sydney Council and the so-called Sydney Peace Foundation. It was given to John Pilger, who's the most radical, far-left journalist in Australian history. He's always deriding Australia as a genocidal nation. He's a conspiracy theorist. He's an old com who's out there with every single... I don't know anything about that guy. Pause, uh, uh, ...bagging Israel, bagging the Jews, pro-Palestinian, standing know. up for all these different terrorist groups in the Middle East. Pilger... Pilger is not pro-peace, he's pro-radicalism up and down the line. Other winners have been Noam Chomsky, who at the time said that uh, George Bush was a bigger criminal than Osama bin Laden, and that gave him the Sydney Peace Prize. Not much credibility there. And another winner has been Hannah Ashrawi, 
uh, a known apologist for terrorist causes, pro-Palestinian, anti-Semitic. I mean, down. Okay, I, I'm not going to wade into exactly who and what these people are. Well, I mean, Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky saying that George Bush was a bigger terrorist than Osama bin Laden. I don't know if lobbing the word terrorist around is, is all that constructive. But in, in point of fact, uh, George Bush, the orders that he gave out killed far more people than Osama bin Laden did. So I'll let you take that in. With a grain of salt, it sounds like this this video here is. Uh, I you know my, my biggest focus here is the idea of this this BLM winning any kind of peace prize is is incredibly insane and ludicrous. But Mark, uh, Mark, I don't think you quite. Uh, I don't I don't think that while I'm with you on the BLM thing, I'm not sure that you have the full reality of 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 all of the ways that that people are uh threatening and oppressing your liberties and it's <laughs> and the blm actually i i gotta say blm for me is not as as nearly a threat as well uh, well it's not nearly a threat as as the 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 entities behind the the most powerful uh, media outlets in America today. They actually have far more of an impact on uh, influencing actions and threaten my, that threaten my liberty than the BLM do. And uh, we're talking about creating a, a new reality with this immigration building a wall that, uh, you know, maybe one day I get a suntan, like way too much tan one day, and suddenly I don't look like a lily white boy. And I'm walking down the street and somebody wants my papers. We need to see your papers. Unfortunately, I'm a really, really pale person, so it's not likely that it'll happen. But there's a lot of people in America that have been here for generations upon generations that are going to, 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 to come under that we need to see your papers thing. That, that that to me is is far more of a threat than than the BLM and and honestly, I'm I'm no fan of uh, Bin Laden, but far more of a threat than Bin Laden. I'm I'm gonna go for just a little bit more. I want to see if this guy actually gets to something good because so far he just sounds like a, a nationalist right wing dude. Come on, Mark, say something, say something redeeming because because I've actually heard stuff from Rebel Media that I like, and then I hear this kind of stuff. Down the line, you're getting these award winners who are complete out and out radicals. And Black Lives Matters in the United States don't think for a single minute this has been awarded on the basis of their peace credentials. Perhaps it's appropriate they get this prize because they're very consistent with the past winners. It's all hosted by an academic at Sydney University called Stuart Reese, who has come up with a crazy idea of Sydney University, the host uh, university, disassociating itself from every single Israeli institution. How crazy is that? For a Sydney university to have no contact with Israel, one of the most technologically, academically advanced. In All right, that's enough of that, folks. We're going to move on. Okay. Dude, I was hoping he had something more to say than the nationalist whatever stuff. And You know, the, the, the things that the guy was challenging the people on were, were like, you question the police. Oh, don't question the police. You can't do that. You question Israel. Oh, like, I mean, Black Lives Matters. I, I mean, well, this this woman's particular orbit. They 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 say things like basically, if you're white, you're a racist. Okay, that that to me is far more concerning than how they feel about Israel or how they feel about the police. This guy, he's focused on the wrong stuff. It's not not cool, dude. Not cool at all. And I, I, I we we need a laugh, man. We need a laugh. So we're gonna go. We gotta go get a laugh. Let's go get our laugh. This is this is gonna be thanks to. Well, th this lap is, is going to be thanks to uh, James Corbett of the Corbett Report. I'm going to play just the, the opening uh, little, 
little rant he has here. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the world only has three years left. Three years left to live. Come on, James, take it away. Dear friends and subscribers, it's with a very heavy heart that I come to you today with some very alarming information. One of the top former UN climate officials has come out to warn that there are only three years left to save the world. This coming from no less an authority than The Guardian. World has three years left to stop dangerous climate change, warn experts. And experts are saying this, folks, not just any normal people, experts. Former UN climate chief Christiana Figueres, among signatories of letter, I warning love experts. That the next three years will be crucial to stopping the worst effects of global warming. Crucial! And this goes on to say that in a letter published in the journal Nature this week, the authors, including former UN climate chief Christiana Figueres and Hans Joachim Schellenhuber of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, oh, they sound like experts. The next they got experts. Three sounding years names. will be crucial. They calculate that if emissions can be brought permanently lower by 2020 then the temperature thresholds leading to runaway, irreversible climate change... Irreversible death! This is very serious information. Irreversible I hope you death. take it seriously. I do. I do. Right. I do take okay. it. Thank so, you, James. yes, in a letter published in the journal Nature this week, former a UN letter. climate chief Christiana Figueres and her cohorts oh, he, he, calculating good stuff for that you. if emissions can be brought permanently lower by 2020, calculating. then we can save the planet, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. The odd thing about this Guardian article, I don't know, don't you think it's kind of odd that they do have a number of links to things in here, but for some reason they don't link you to the actual letter in the journal Nature. Why is why, that? Why wouldn't they do that? It's almost why? like they don't think that no! you are intelligent adult human beings who no! can process information for yourself. And furthermore, it's almost like they don't want you to read it. So yeah. I will put the link, of course, All right. in the show notes for this video, so you can go read it for yourself, so, the actual letter they're writing so, about here. So I'm going to pause this like here. this one and many others. And again, go to istatetv.com, or excuse me, istate.tv forward slash zero, 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 and you'll find the show notes. You'll find the video. I encourage you to watch the whole video, but I'm not going to... Uh, uh, play the whole video here. In essence, what you have are a bunch of technocrats who have they, they, they don't they're, they're not scientists. They the experts. They're they're not scientists. They're 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 technocrats who have decided somehow that uh, in looking at the 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 data, if we don't do something you know really drastic. Really soon. By the way, really drastic, really soon means, you know, we need, a, we need a centralized authority to tell the whole world how to structure everything about human existence. If we could just get that within the next three years, we will not die. But if we don't get that in the next three years, we're all gonna die! Yeah, that's right, folks. We're all gonna die. Thank you, James. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. I now realize that I must uh, turn over all of my sovereignty, all of my independence, all of my free will to uh, perhaps 100 or 200 people that will be smart enough to figure out how the other 7 billion of us can live our lives in a way that we are not going to kill everyone within the next three years. Wow, that was awesome. I'm going to skip a story ahead in line. Now, this next story, this next story, uh, I'm probably, I'm a bad man for, for probably doing this story. Uh, it's an AP story. I got to do it. And and for, for, for those of you in the Liberty community, you'll understand why it is that I got to do it. I suspect that this may have been Jared Howe. I don't know if anybody has heard of uh, Jared Howe, but I believe, uh, um, or or one of his sock accounts, it was probably a Jared Howe sock account uh, that's behind this. <laughs> so let's let's go to it here. The story here is from the AP. It's Oregon police kill man trying to steal a helicopter. That's right. One of probably an alt writer who was like, you know what? I'm tired of putting out the memes that say 
Get in the helicopter. I'm tired of it. I'm going to make a run. So, you know, he, he lived, lived in his mother's basement. Really couldn't afford. Couldn't afford the helicopter. So, so he said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and, and try to get me one. I heard like six or seven pop sounds. Then I saw like a bunch of cops running across the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Didn't think much of it at the time. And all of a sudden we saw police running across the road. Mm -hmm. Saw like four or five fire trucks, a couple of ambulances. And then we saw the crime scene unit and we're like, eh, better stay back because I don't want to get involved in that. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to get involved in that, buddy. You definitely don't want to get involved in that. So, so... So somebody tried to steal a helicopter. Uh, is in Portland, Oregon. They shot and killed the man who tried to steal a helicopter at gunpoint. The man had fled the scene after climbing the fence of a small airport. I believe his last words were praise Keck. I'm, I'm not making this up. Okay. Maybe I am. We're going to go to the next story here. And you know what? This isn't really a story. It's just a little gun porn. That's right. I think this is going to be a regular part of our show. We're just going to throw in a little gun porn here. This is this is uh, 44 Magnum and 454 Kazool versus Ballistics Gel. This is from Kentucky Ballistics. By the way, if you're not subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics, I can't believe this dude only has 6,000 subscribers. Dude is awesome. you got to subscribe to Kentucky Ballistics. The dude just takes large calibers of things and does things with large calibers. How do you not love that? All right. Take it away, Mr. Kentucky Ballistics Man. Okay, we've got our 48 inches of 10% ballistics gel set up. We're going to start out with 44 Magnum with a 9.5 inch barrel with a 300 grain hollow point. Forty-four Magnum, three hundred grain hollow point, fired out of a nine and a half inch barrel. It stopped right at about thirty-six inches, and at some point it tumbled because the bullet is facing backwards. Now, all right, we're gonna again go to iState.tv forward slash four zero 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 zero, and you see the show notes. You'll see this video. And you can watch the whole video. Watch, he will then test the 454 Casul, and he does it at various uh, barrel lengths. And it's it's a it's a beautiful thing, man. It's a, it's a thing of beauty. Now, I, I I have two choices here for a possible story here. I'm not sure. I think that I'm going to pick. I think I'm going to pick this one. This is a uh, this is a little bit of taste of uh, Lozilla. Lozilla is a show I do with Andrew Marich, aka Bodhi Agora, which I think we're gonna do that show Wednesdays at six p.m., which should be on Nepa, the Facebook page for Nepa TV. So this is a little taste of uh, Lozilla that I'll I'll do at the toward the end of the show here. So let's get this story up here. So this is a little segment that ABC 10 News does called Fact or Fiction. Let's play along. And the Fact or Fiction story is airport sign insulting to cows. The, so the story, well, I'll let the story speak for itself. Tonight's Fact or Fiction, we're looking into a strange story you may have seen today. It claims that an airport took down an ad because animal rights activists complained it was disrespectful to cows. It's true. Posters at an island airport in Toronto read, Your precious cargo, not cattle. The posters were touting improvements made to the airport, but animal rights activist Len Goldberg complained on Facebook that the message was insulting to cows. He organized people to contact the airport, and it worked. An airport spokesman apologized whoa, 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 and whoa. said that the whoa, post... Whoa, 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 hold on. Hold on, I'm going to go back to... i got to relive this moment. Hold on. You were thinking fiction, right? I was thinking fiction, okay? Let, let's, 
Let's let's uh, let, uh, we, we, we've got to relive this. Cargo, okay. not cattle. The That's right. Your precious cargo, not cattle. Posters were touting improvements made to the airport, but animal rights activist Len Goldberg complained on Facebook that the message was insulting to cows. Insulting to cows, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I, for one, am of a school that if you allow words to to, I'm not saying that words can't hurt. Words hurt me, definitely. I mean, I choose. You choose to be offender. Sometimes I choose to be offender. Sometimes I choose to be offended, and afterwards I thought, man, I shouldn't have. Uh, I shouldn't have given into that uh, offendingness there. But sometimes you. Uh, choose to be offended and you're like no yeah, yeah yeah i choose to be offended that's right i do in this case uh cows cows have never chosen to be offended they can't choose to be offended by words they have no idea there's 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 nothing out there that would remotely clue them in that somehow some some species organization is trying to imply that cargo cargo inanimate things you you capitalist pigs with your inanimate cargo your things that you bought with money money that you got from the blood of the workers that you value that more than cows mm, dignified dignified I don't know. I don't, I don't think the cows are, are going to register. What's What's more amazing, it is amazing to me that there is an organization out there that people actually send money to. People send money to this organization so that it can go around, around and assure that businesses don't say mean things about an animal. Some, some individual... And or individuals decided, hey, man, you know that money that I earned off of the blood of the workers? Well, maybe not. But hey, that money that I earned, I'm going to send it to this organization so I can stop companies from from making fun of animals. That's wrong. If What are we going to do if one of them becomes sentient and sees all these signs everywhere that says, your precious cargo, not cattle. What does that mean? They're going to go crazy. They're going to lose their crap. You know what? Hold on. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I have to add a little zen moment here. That's right. I hope that I don't get totally uh, clobbed for this. But I got to play just a part. Here we go. This is what's going to happen. That's right. This is it's Cows with Guns. Song is by Dana Lyons. Do we want this to happen? You see that? Yeah. They look yeah. so stupid. They aren't much Yeah, fun. yeah. They're fine. They were fine. Cows we we, we should have left them alone. But did we leave them alone? To grow, grow yeah. To die. Yeah, that's die all they do. At the hamburger fry. Yeah. And everything was good, ladies and gentlemen. Cows well done. Yes. Everything was fine, ladies and gentlemen. Until one day. Nobody thunk it. Nobody, nobody knew. knew. No one imagined, no one imagined the great cow the guru. Great and you know who the cow guru is? The cow guru is uh, it's a CJW, a cow justice warrior. That's right, a CJ. No, that's cultural justice warrior. I gotta come up. Uh, no, no, BJ, BJW. Wow, there you go. It's a BJW, a bovine justice warrior who developed sentience, happened to be going to the airport. Saw that airport sign so like, whoa, 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 dude. We literally give you the meat off our bones. And that's not good enough for you. No, that's not good enough. We literally give you the meat of our bones. And you're telling us that even after all of that, cargo is better than us. Yeah. Cows are one. Cows are one. It all started he with a sign. Forest, read books with great zeal. He loved <laughs> Che Guevara, a revolutionary. <laughs> He's reading <laughs> Che. How fitting. Told you he was a BJW. Justice, but nobody See? Justice. Telling you BJW. In the herds. This song is old. This is from the 80s. Drums. Wow. He moved. We must fight. Escape the poor will die. die. Cows gathered, Cows gathered round because the stakes. So the stakes were literally high. Get it, stakes. 
it bad you got it right. Bun. Oh, there you go. He knows it's a bad cow pun. He owned then it. He was captured, stuffed into a yes. crate, loaded onto a truck, where wow. he rode, rode to, his to his fate. But this isn't Cows gonna. This bun. isn't gonna last. This is. They're not gonna. This is. This is. Who looked rather woozy? This is. No this is a bridge too far, folks. Yes! BJWs for the world! They came with Bovine Justice Warriors! He kicked for the groin. He pissed in He eyes. did that! He did that! Wow! Cow well hung. Wow! What a rude cow. Knocked over you a think about this. and ran for the door. If, if we just left them alone, if we just left them alone, and we didn't make these vicious signs, this would have never happened, folks. Now, cows have guns. Okay. Six gallons of gas flowed out on the floor. The run, cows run. Come on, get to the chorus already, dude. He picked up a bull. All right, I'm going to go for it. We are Here we go. Roving bovines. There you go. Free roving bovines. You know, they put one too many signs about us. The BJWs were out in full force. Run free today. We, we will, will fight for bovine freedom and hold our heads high. We will run free with the buffalo or die. Cows with guns. There you go, folks. Cows with guns. Don't let it happen. There is a way. Wow. So I'm going to end this show with a an article that well, it's it's very fitting that we we look at 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 the article that we're going to bring up here. And there we go. So this is what to the dissident is the 4th of July. This is from the Libertarian Institute. Um, this is an excerpt, and again, I, I, I encourage you, if you're looking at this video on YouTube as a standalone, or if you're watching this show, go to iState TV, iState.tv forward slash 40000, and you can get a link to read the whole article here. The freedom Jefferson called for was not universal. It was politically motivated and specific. Jefferson did not intend for someone like Frederick Douglass, that's right, Frederick Douglass, a slave turned abolitionist leader to be blessed with the same liberties as Jefferson declared for himself and his fellow Virginians in the preceding decades. Douglass, the, the well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to skip forward here. There, The so-called empire of liberty that Jefferson assisted in establishing in America more than two centuries ago has grown to become the gravest threat to its citizens and to the people it often subjugates around the world. See, that's, that's the hard fact that you, uh, you folks don't want to face on this day. Even though he argued that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the government, that whenever any form of government becomes, well, that's, any form of government is always going to become destructive. To these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. Dude, he's calling for a revolution, but not, not right now, folks. Because right now we got to wave the the flag of we got to wear the flag of our oppressors. We got to wave the flag of our oppressors, and to institute new government. Uh, let's not do that again. Laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them so shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. And uh, this, uh, this dude goes on to write, the freedom Jefferson called for was not universal. It was politically motivated and specific. Jefferson absolutely did not intend, did not intend on someone like Frederick Douglass being free as, as we, as we uh, started. So, 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 so Douglass had this to say, Frederick Douglass said this, would you 
have me argue that man is entitled to liberty? That he is the rightful owner of his own body? Dare you say that? You have already declared it. Must I argue the wrongfulness of slavery? Is that a question for Republicans? Is it to be settled by the rules of logic and argumentation as a matter beset with great difficulty involving a doubtful application of the principle of justice hard to be understood? How should I look today in the presence of Americans dividing and subdividing a discourse to show that men have a natural right to freedom? Speaking of it relatively and positively, negatively and affirmatively, to do so would be to make myself ridiculous and to offer an insult to your understanding. There is not a man beneath the canopy of heaven that does not know that slavery is wrong for him. Now, that, that, that could easily, absolutely, if, if somebody told me that was written today, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a surprise. I understand that there's a difference between uh, I guess you call it chattel slavery, more direct slavery, and the type of uh, the 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 softer, kinder, gentler slavery that that we face today. But that sentence, <laughs> that sentence is that 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 paragraph that what, what what Douglas said is it's still being lived out today in our courts. It's being lived out in our neighborhoods. It's being lived out when a man dares put something on Facebook that challenges the the godlike status of the police and the kind of backlash that he gets with that it's vicious it's 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 literally life threatening and yet people persist in creating codes laws regulations that actually put to debate this very notion to to somehow split hairs and define slavery in a different way to to actually imagine that you can still have a debate over well well who 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 really owns you do you own yourself really you know you you do things that affect people around you even, even if it's not direct i mean you know i mean uh, if you fart into the wind you could possibly affect people in in negative ways you never know you know butterfly effect you know you fart over here and you know there's a a homicidal uh, uh, killing spree happening in Detroit. You never know. So, so knowing that, knowing how everything is interconnected, do you really think that you own yourself? That's essentially where we're at. That's essentially the argument that's being made every day. In the name of these uh, untraceable, unknowable consequences of actions that do not directly harm others, we should be able to enslave people, but we're not going to call it slavery. We're going to call it something else. So this, 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 uh, this article continues here. We're not obligated to carry around the baggage of the founding fathers, nor honor them out of a sense of tradition or heritage or blind nationalism. My lineage is separate and distinct from Jefferson and his contemporaries. And I know now that many of my friends and family would have been part of the disfavored minority of the time just as we are today, although under different circumstances. This Independence Day, he continues to write here, instead of offering effusive praise for Jefferson and the Founding Fathers for laying the foundation of the modern American empire, I would like to honor those individuals who keep the spirit of 76 alive, many of whom I call friends, these dissidents, who undermine and resist the state daily, truly seek independence and liberty in 2017 and beyond. And I, I, I want to I wanna make sure I got the name here. I thought I had his name written here. I want to make sure that I credit the dude that wrote this article here. But while I'm doing that, let, let me just say that on this day, to me, this is a work day. I made it a work day. I did so intentionally. 
on this day in, in any way that you can to your friends, your family, the neighbors, whatever opportunities that you have, just, just introduce just a little bit of the reality of the world that they live in. That, that I, I, I'm, I'm not suggesting that America is the most horrible nation in the world. I, I, I don't, I don't know how, I mean, what do you add up body counts? Is that how you determine who's the worst nation in the world? I don't know. But, but I will say it's not the land of the free. It's not the home of the brave. If, if, if your life is, is living in a tiny box in which you, you really don't, you don't, you don't care to, to wonder out all that much. There's not a lot of things that you want to do with your life. You don't really have a lot of strong opinions. You could go through life feeling like you're free. You could be in China, actually, and experience the same thing that you could experience in America. Uh, but 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 if you have any boldness about you, if you have any vision about you, if you have any any dreams of 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 being a a, a world builder of of even if you if you just have a dream of 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 being as as much as is humanly possible within the restrictions of nature around us, of of just being a self determiner, then you feel it, you feel it every day. You know that there are things that you cannot do without facing dire consequences from, I mean, not, not just state coercive action, but, but, but societal coercive action. That you know that, that, that people live in a reality that they believe that they have permission to create a category of subhuman for anyone who questions the sanctity and the authority and the majesty of their God, the state. And I think on that end, we're, we're going to end the show. Oh, oh, I want to make sure I credit here. The writer here is Jared LaBelle. Jared, it's an excellent article. And again, go to iState TV forward slash zero, zero, zero. That's four zeros. And you can read Oh, you'll get a link to the article and you can read the article in full. I think on that note, we're going to end this show. We actually, so this is my test show and <laughs> I really don't want to go over more than an hour. And I'm actually at an hour and nine minutes for this stream. So probably can't do as many stories as, as I thought I would probably going to have to, however many stories I did, I'm probably going to have to take out two. I think that'll put me safely under an hour, but thank you everybody for joining us on this, this, this test show. Uh, whether you've watched live or whether you're watching the archive of the show or whether you're seeing the YouTube show or the the, the excerpts on, on YouTube. And if you are watching on YouTube, I want you to make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe to the iState channel because that's the, the that's where this video will be. Uh, you can go to youtube.com. You see it right there. See I state. And then up above, you see the twitter.com backslash I state TV forward slash sorry, I TV. And above that facebook.com forward slash I state TV. And I encourage you to connect to all of those networks. I will, there will not be a show tomorrow because instead I, what I may end up doing is maybe a brief excerpt. Uh, so a couple test excerpts tomorrow, but tomorrow I'm actually going to be working on uh, the, what would be the introduction. I need an introduction for the show that will allow me time to promote the show. I, I started a, a live stream. Uh, I ended up canceling it cause I screwed it up. But, uh, uh, for for those of you that know, when you when you run a show by yourself, you you have to do promotions on Facebook to to get people to show up, uh, to 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 see your show. Especially for for us, our I State Facebook page only has like 500 likes, so you're not going to get a tremendous amount of people just seeing it without promotions. So I'll be creating some sort of uh, opening video thing that I can play that will allow me while that video is played to actually promote the show to. To, to groups and friends and whatnot. So the goal is e we will either be starting this next Monday or the following Monday. I'm not sure. It depends upon how the next test will go and the next test 
I'm probably going to do another test show on Thursday. And if that goes really, really well, then I'll do another test Friday. And if that goes really well, then we'll actually like officially kick this off uh, starting Monday. So thank you, everybody who was here live. And thank you, everybody who's watching the archive on Facebook and on YouTube. Be sure you share this show because, you know, if you don't, uh, I know where the cows with guns are. And uh, I know where you live. You know, I'm just saying. We'll see you when we see you. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv for the show. PG News, or excuse me, PG Fire. Not PG News Fire, PG Fire. PG Fire. Now you have to wonder, does the PG stand for Paul Gordon or Parental Guidance? And I think if you watch the show, you realize it's Parental Guidance.